All right, I want to kick the tires real quick and just make sure you've got some things down, Pat, especially those of you who have got the whole process thing, trying to understand the process, spending time studying. I want to help you find out how effective your studying has been. So let's jump into some PMP immersion basic questions on the topic of process. Okay. All right, so let's go to our first question. A new initiative has made it beyond the needs assessment stage and a business case has been developed by the sponsor. What should the project manager do next? So I'm gonna give you a minute to think about it. So think about it, choose an option. All right, got five more, five more seconds. All right, three, two, and one. So the answer to this question can be found if you look at page 30. Page 30 of the handbook guide. So let's end the poll and let's share the results. The sequence of events is like this. Needs assessment. And then it goes to the business case. And then it goes to the benefits management plan first. And then the project charter. And this is all on page 30 of the PMBOK guide. This is just like the very basics of project management. What happens before your project charter is, is uh, completed. So. And put this down here. Okay. The reason is when you look at develop project charter, you'll see that the benefits management plan is one of the possible inputs. This is the only way it could be possible. Now, it's not to say that your benefits management plan stays the same. It changes throughout the project, but at least you have some semblance of a benefits management plan. Now, if you take a look at option A, the language is not precise, it's rather rough. And that's how your exam could be. They're not going to give you the exact language from PMBOK on a platter. So don't even let that distract you. They're just gonna roughly say things like project plan, plan in the project, not develop project management plan. So you gotta be ready to look out for stuff like that. Okay, any questions? Page 30, okay. Let's move forward. Go into our next one. Let's get rid of this. And question number two. The project charter has been developed by the sponsor and the project manager. What should the project manager do next? Let's go ahead and launch. You folks have uh, found a loophole in the question. Well done. <laughs> okay. Three, two, and one. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Everybody got this one right. The answer is indeed plan in. 
it wouldn't be performance reporting because you just got the charter done. You need to get some work done. And it wouldn't be quality vision because however you want to look at it, that level of minutia is usually done after as far as your quality management plan. But if you wanted to say a higher level vision, it would have been done like way before. Like if you had a vision, vision is always higher level. So however you wanted to think about it, it would have already been done or it is going to be done. Backlog refinement, that would need to happen in the middle of somewhere. So you could get very obscure questions where they don't really tell you if you're working in a purely agile scenario. And even if they did say it's hybrid, you would still know that backlog refinement and these ones wouldn't be a good choice. So again, you got to be ready for the exam because uh, they very well could give you options from agile mixed with options from predictive, but don't let that distract you. All right, here's your next one. The product roadmap has been completed and shared with the stakeholders and business people. What should follow? Let's go ahead and relaunch. I'm <laughs> just looking at your colorful comments. Sorry to get you exhausted to this point of exhaustion. <laughs> I know you didn't mean it that way. I'm just joking. All right. You're all done. Three, two, one, and zero. That's about a minute. It's a short question. Let's end it. All right. So here's the trick. Which two are exactly the same thing? That should always be a, a, a red light right away. The moment you see two things that are the same, like, uh oh, this is the same thing. So which ones are the same? A and C. A and C, exactly. That should have been a clue right there. So the product roadmap is a higher, higher level thing, right? That you do. In the world of Agile, we peel an onion. So if you're starting at the product roadmap level of thinking, you wouldn't just go straight down to the iteration level. You know, if you look at PMI's depiction of this in chapter six, they show you the vision comes first after the vision. Let's take a look at page 216. Product vision drives product roadmap. Product roadmap drives release plans, page 216. So I would have been expecting you, if you're getting done with the roadmap level, come down to the release level, then you go down to the iteration level, as you can see on page 216 in this book of all books. So the fact that A and C are the same thing, it should have, it should have already stuck out. So it's not iteration, it's not sprint. Backlog refinement could take place later on, but you've just got the product roadmap. It, you don't even have your product backlog at this point. So you can't go all the way to backlog refinement. Let me also point out to you, there's something else that should happen. The PMI tell you this in the Agile Practice Guide. If you follow me to page 50, and let's look forward. So it's not 50, it's 52. So here's the order. Let me just give you an order so that it, it makes sense for you, okay? So you have the vision, you have the product roadmap, you have the release plan, you have the iteration plan, right? And then down to the lower levels of stuff, open up to page 216, what you're gonna see under the iteration is features and you're gonna see stories and you're gonna see tasks, right? So somewhere between when you do your release and when you do your iteration planning, you obviously need to have an idea of your product backlog. You cannot do your iteration planning without it. So however long you've stalled it for, 
this should come into the question at some point, either there, someone could also argue, well, we could have the beginnings of the road of the product backlog here as well. So without uh, splitting hairs, my recommendation would be to look at it the way the PMI has given it to you, vision, roadmap, release plan. And then if you're going down into the iteration level, you need to at least have an idea of what you're doing for that iteration. So you need your product backlog at that point. So that could be the way you think about it. Okay, so the answer is, is release planning. It's a bit of a tricky one, is it? Not really, just common sense. So anytime you see two things that have the same definition, for example, if you see um, mandatory dependency and hard logic as two different options, because they're the same thing, that should already be a clue. Hmm, these are probably both wrong. Any questions about this? Not a question, but would you equate release to a milestone? Like you, kind of... yeah, for a hybrid for a hybrid scenario, you could. Yeah, it's a so a release um, is an accomplishment. So you could say it is a milestone. Yeah. Some people would say an iteration is a milestone as well. Although you typically don't hear that in uh, hardcore uh, agile circles, but in the world of PMI, because there's so much stuff mixed up, you very well could hear them say it's a milestone. I was just trying to make the, you know, for people who need to kind of make the connection to what it could be and like and predictive. Yeah, so- um, Because the release yeah. is, is big. Like a big yeah, you're right. It could be a, it could, you could look at it as a milestone. The key thing is that a milestone is an accomplishment and it's a zero duration event. So we don't, we don't say it's a task, but it's an event. And if you remember these, uh, you can liken the event to the accomplishment of a, of a release, completing a release. Anytime anything is completed, it could be a milestone. In the world of traditional, they would say phase, phase gate, phase exit. And uh, you could also say a milestone has been achieved. Good stuff. All right. I know, Cynthia. All right, let's go ahead and get rid of this and go to another one. The iteration plan has been completed by the team. What should follow. Hopefully this will make more sense now. All right. Let's round it up. All right, let's go ahead and end it. And I'm putting this back on the screen just so that we can think through what we've uh, said. All right, so let's go ahead and end the poll and let's share the results. So taking a look at this, you can see that the iteration plan is the same as the sprint plan. Thank goodness no one chose C. The release planning should have already been done. So it doesn't make sense to say what should follow is release planning. No, release plan has already been done. So what should follow will have to be something else. Cannot be release planning because release planning needs to have been done before the iteration planning in the sequence of things. Right, sprint planning is the same as iteration planning, product vision's already been done, so the answer has to be daily scrum. Okay. All right. You gotta know that sequence. Let me actually get that text. 
or the image. Let me just get the image, take a screenshot. I'm, I'm sure that by now you've got a folder because I'm always throwing things at you and I'm sorry, but that's just how this exam is. This, there's so many things, you know, you get to the point where you know that if you don't capture it, you're not gonna remember. So just capture it. All right, let's go to the next question. You are the project lead on a new initiative that was approved by management. The project plan, you see what I did there? I, I didn't say project management plan because sometimes they won't say that. Sometimes they would even just say the plan, all right? So the project plan has been completed by the team. What should follow? Let's go ahead and relaunch. All right. Okay. Well done, everyone. I see AB came in. Welcome, AB. Good to see you. All right. A few more, 30 seconds more. All right, three, two, and one. So let's think about this. Before a plan can be deemed complete, you must have all the baselines, right? Let's work through this and it might help the thinking. So you get done with your baselines and your subsidiary plans, right? And only when you are done with these, can you truly say you can move on to complete your project plan. Would you agree about that? You cannot have a complete project plan on, unless your baselines and subsidiary plans are complete, right? Okay, now, would you agree that in order for your baselines and your subsidiary plans to be complete, you must have identified all the work to be done. Would you agree about that? Yeah, okay. So hold on to this thought. Let's make it bigger, put it over here. All the work to be done, all right. So I want you to follow the arrows because this is how you, your brain needs to process it really quick as you're going through the exam. You need to say, I needed to have done that before that. I needed to have done that before that. All right, one more. Just follow the logic and we're gonna be good. All right. Would you agree that in order for you to have identified all the work to be done, you should have identified all risk associated tasks. In other words, you should have identified any risk work to be done. Think about that for a second. So what am I saying? If you have outlined the risks that could affect the project, those risks, you need contingency reserves for some of them in the form of money. 
you need to plan, okay, there's a possibility that this could go off. So I will put aside this contingency reserve and estimate cost. That needs to have happened. So what am I saying? You needed to have identified risks before you do things like estimates. And before, let me just say, before you can complete, you could actually start estimates, but you can't complete them in all honesty until you've identified uncertainty associated with them. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah? Cool. All right. As a result of that, my friends, we can disqualify risk identification as far as what should follow. Because if you're done with your project plan, it means that you've already identified risks. So it cannot be D. We can get rid of that. Okay? Now, think about it. You are the project lead on a new initiative that was approved by management. The project plan has been completed. That means initiating should have been already done. So you should know your stakeholders, right? Right. So we can get rid of A, right? A needs to go. All right, now let me show you why I'm going through all of this. You see the polarization? <laughs> it's very polarized which is why I'm trying to explain all the options and which of them is wrong and which can't be. Now, let's talk about the final one. Work performance reporting. Work performance reporting needs you to actually do some work you can't just have a work performance report when you got done with planning would you agree yeah yeah so it's saying what should follow you got to do some work which one of these is actually doing some work it's b Developing a solution is part of executing. That's where the work is done. Remember, you get the deliverable from executing. So if you wanted to complete the flow of this entire question, you could say solution development. Solution development needs to happen before your work performance reporting. So you're going to have another arrow that would go from here and finally into here. And that's why the best answer is B. Does it make sense? Some of you already did all of that in your head. Not like this, but you already knew this comes first. So you don't have to draw data flow to solve the problem, but you just need to see for my plan to be done, risk identification was already done. Customer identification was already done. I cannot do work performance reporting, except I have done some work. Is there an option that alludes to me doing some work? Yes. Development of the solution. Boom. Choose it. That's it. So that's how you need to be thinking on the exam. What comes first? What could have been done? So on and so forth. All right. I'm going to take a screenshot because I really just want you to get the, the mindset, the flow, you know, the logic flow. It's important. All right. Any questions about that? Make sense now? All right. Let's go ahead and let's go to another one. So you're seeing, it's really saying what should happen next. And all the questions I've been showing you today are pretty much what happens next. That's how your exam would be. Just remember that. All right. In the second release of a new product consisting of several releases, you have made some high-level observations and generated data about the project. What should follow? Let's go ahead and launch the poll. 
I'm going to give you a minute to think about it. Well done. I hope you've made some conclusions because I gave you quite a bit of time. Let's go ahead and end the poll and let's share the results. So taking a look at this, my friends, this is talking about a well-known output. Who, who guessed which output it was or what thing it was? What is it? What's it called? You mean work performance information? You got it. So this, when we talk about high level observations and generated data, that data is a raw observation that needs analysis. So what should follow is you need work performance information. The only one of these that alludes to that is A. It's not closing out, which no one chose. No one was fooled by that. It's not risk identification and solution and well done in not choosing that one. But when you take a look at B, it says work with a team to develop customer plans. Yeah, you would have already gotten some planning done, right? This says in the second release. So even if you wanted to think about customer plans, whatever that is, right? Resource management plans, stakeholder engagement plans, all that stuff, it should have already been done. It's very vague. Anytime you see something vague like that, you got to look at it and don't touch it with a 10 foot pole. So just look at it suspiciously. That's suspicious. So that that's just a red herring to throw you off, right? The bottom line is we have generated data, which means work is ongoing. See, high level observations means we're beyond planning, whatever the planning would have been. What we're doing now is taking a look at data. If you have data, you better understand the data. So you got to analyze the data and then you're going to generate conclusive work performance information as Cynthia was alluding to. So the best answer is A, okay? B is a red herring, a big bogus red herring for that matter. So beware of red herrings. Like this, this really doesn't mean anything. What's a customer plan? Resource management plan, stakeholder engagement plan. Well, that was done before. So that's how you need to think through stuff like this. All right. I have a few more. Are you getting value from it or should I just um, hand it back? Oh, this is awesome. Keep going. Yeah? Okay. Please don't stop. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We have, a, we have about three more. So let me show you the, mi the mindset and the logic behind uh, what we're doing here. As you take your exam, you need to be thinking like this. Am I going from initiating to planning? Am I going from planning to executing? Am I going from executing to monitoring and controlling or monitoring and controlling to closing? Or is it some other out of order flow? And some of what I showed you were not really executing the monitoring and controlling, they were out of order flows. And this is why you need to know the 49 processes that we just went over. So important that you know it. 
Okay, let's take a look at, I think we have three more in this category. And in the other category, we have too many to cover today. So we'll just do three more. Here is the next one. You're working on a predictive project and the solution has been completed and accepted by the customer. What should follow? Hopefully this is gonna be easy now. There we go. We'll do a one minute. All right, three, two, and one. Okay, slam dunk. Well done, folks. The answer is indeed A. You wouldn't do B, C, or D because all of that stuff should have happened, right? If it's been accepted, quality control, quality assurance, scope validation is already been done. So well done. Very happy at the results here. Let's go to our next one. I'll give you a minute. Go for it. All right, I think our time is up. Let's go ahead and end the poll and share the results. Okay, so it says you're a project coordinator with a design engineering firm. Project managers requested you work with subject matter experts and stakeholders to decompose a project scope. When you are done with this activity, what should the project manager do next? I'm glad that you're thinking in the right direction. If you've already done the project scope, right? Decompose a scope in WBS, you've done that. Finalize the risk register with all potential risks is premature because you don't understand other things you should know. So it's not that. Um, and it's not D. Analyze the likely project issues. It's too early for that. You're still uh, in planning. Note, it didn't say project risks. It said project issues that could occur. So this is really more in the thinking stage, but it's still too premature because you don't understand the schedule or the cost or the other pieces yet. So this would be the best option to choose. So well done. We have one more and I will ask you folks what you wanna do after this one. Let's go ahead and relaunch. All right, go for it.
Alrighty then. Three, two, and one. Oh, we're still thinking. Okay. Very polarized. All right, so let's take a look at this. Set. Your project scheduler with an engineering firm working on an integrated master schedule to combine 20 different projects. So what is that called? 20 different projects. You're trying to integrate 20 different projects. What's that? Program. It's a program. It's a program. So it, all this is looking for is, do you know that this should be a program? So let's take a look at the options. A said, assign the work to one program manager to manage as a sub project. There's a problem with that word. Or as a bigger, higher level portfolio. It's not a portfolio. It's clearly going to be a program. It said this or this. So this is trying to throw you off. It said, assign the work to one program manager. So you want to assign all of these 20 projects to one person. And then you're saying as a sub project, it's just too muddy. So it's not going to be A. B said, recommend that the PMO manage the work as part of, again, portfolio. And then it said with a functional manager as a, <laughs> as a supervisor. That doesn't even make sense. That's not the convention. PMOs don't report to a functional manager. So it's just skewed. So it's not going to be B. D says, view this as a sub program. Being, again, a func seriously functional manager with all these projects? No. Why would you do that? Have project managers on this endeavor report on individual project progress to a program manager. It's just saying, make it a program. That's the best answer. Everything else is contradictory, muddy, or improper. So all these ones putting functional manager in there, no, why would you do that? And then A is just totally muddy. This is what makes the exam a little bit tricky, okay? So A is not right because it's, it wants to assign all of this work, all of this 20 projects to one program manager. No, that's not how it works. The structure in programs is a program manager with oversight of smaller buckets of work being managed by project managers. And that's why the answer is C. All right, I hope you enjoy the little quiz. I know it might appear hot, but at least we're getting, we're getting hotter ourselves, right? We're getting to perfection. So let me go ahead and pause it.